Hi everyone, welcome back to the TensorFlow channel. My name is Nikita and I'm a Google Cloud Developer Advocate for Machine Learning and Data Science. Today, I'm gonna show you how to get started with distributed training on Google Cloud. We'll start with some TensorFlow code in a Colab notebook and see how to distribute training across multiple GPUs within a managed JupyterLab environment on Google Cloud. If you're new to distributed training or if you just need a refresher, be sure to check out the other video I recorded, which covers the basics of distributed training in TensorFlow. You can find it linked in the description box below. To use Google Cloud, you'll need a project with billing enabled. So if you're new to GCP, I've gone ahead and linked some additional resources below to help you get started. GCP also offers a $300 credit for new users, and you can use this for some of your first experiments. So with that, let's jump into the demo. I've got a Colab notebook open with some TensorFlow code. Now you might already be familiar with using the GPU runtime in Colab, and this can really help to speed up your training time. But Colab only offers a single GPU. So if you wanna do distributed training, you're going to need to use something other than Colab. Now, before we get into that, let's start by walking through the code in this notebook. The prediction task here is to classify images of the cassava plant by various disease conditions. We'll start by importing TensorFlow and TensorFlow datasets, and then we'll download the cassava dataset from TensorFlow datasets. Next, we define a few functions which will help us to pre-process the data and create our model. The preprocess data function will take our images and resize them and then divide by 255 since this is image data and we have pixel values. The create dataset function creates our TF data dataset by mapping, shuffling, batching, and prefetching our data. And the create model function uses the Keras functional API to create the model. So now that we have these functions defined, we can call the create model function and then we can compile our model. We'll go ahead and set the batch size to 32, and we can call the create dataset function, and this will create our training data dataset. And of course, for a more realistic example, you would probably have validation and test data as well, but for this example, we can just stick to using training data. We'll set the epochs to two, and then we can call model.fit. And you'll see that our model is going to take a couple of minutes on each epoch. So what we actually want to do is take this code and we want to modify it for distributed training and run a distributed training job using two GPUs instead of just using one. And to do that, we're going to use Google Cloud. I'm in the Google Cloud console in my sandbox project and I'm under the Vertex AI section. And I got here by clicking on the navigation menu and then just scrolling all the way to the bottom here until you get to the artificial intelligence section. Vertex AI is Google Cloud's managed machine learning platform. And if you'd like to learn more, there are some links in the box below. Note that if you've never used Vertex AI in this project before, you'll be prompted to enable the API on this page and you should follow the steps. Now there are many different ways to do distributed training in Google Cloud. And today I'm just going to show you one way that should be pretty easy to get started with, especially if you're used to working in Colab or just in notebook environments in general. We'll start by clicking on Workbench over here on the left-hand side. And Workbench is the place to go in GCP if you want to use a notebook. We'll then click on Manage Notebooks up here at the top and then click on New Notebook to create a notebook. We'll start by giving our notebook a name. And then we can click Advanced Settings. And under Advanced Settings, we're going to change the machine type to be an N1 Standard 8. And then we'll go ahead and add two GPUs. And note that if you do choose to add GPUs, you'll have to check this box here to install the NVIDIA GPU drivers for you. And then we can click Create. And our notebook will take a couple minutes to be created. And once this instance has been provisioned, you'll see that this open Jupyter lab text over here will turn blue. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a few minutes and we'll be able to open our new managed instance. So now that the instance has been provisioned, we can go ahead and click on open Jupyter lab. 
And note that the first time you click on Open Jupyter Lab, you'll be asked to authenticate, and you can just follow the steps in the UI to copy and paste your authentication code. We're now in the Manage Jupyter Lab environment, and what we're going to do is download the code from our CoLab notebook and upload it here. And then we can double click on this notebook and we'll select the TensorFlow2 kernel. And before I do anything, I'm just going to quickly execute this NVIDIA SMI command. And this is just to confirm that we do in fact have two GPUs, and you can see both of them here, GPU0 and GPU1, they're both Tesla V100s. Okay, so what we'll do next is we'll modify this code in this notebook to make use of distributed training. And to do that, we're going to use the TF Distribute Strategy API. So step one is to create our strategy. And we're going to use mirrored strategy, which will allow us to distribute triggering across both of the GPUs on our machine. The next thing we want to do is wrap the creation of our model variables within the scope of the strategy. Lastly, we'll scale up our batch size by the number of replicas. And in this case, the number of replicas is two because we have two GPUs. And instead of hard coding the number of replicas as two here, you can just use the num replicas in sync method. So with that, we've made the necessary changes and we're ready to run this distributed training job. So let's go back to the top and start executing these cells. We'll import TensorFlow and TensorFlow datasets, and then we'll download the cassava dataset. We'll create our preprocessing function and our create dataset function and our create model function. And then we can go ahead and create the strategy. And you'll see here that mirrored strategy is using both devices, uh, GPU zero and GPU one. Then of course we create our model. We set the batch size. We create our training data data set and we set the number of epochs and then we are ready to call model.fit. And you'll see here that the steps per epoch is now 89. And this is half of what it was when we were using a single GPU. This is data parallelism in action. Since we set the global batch size to be 32 times two, the CPU will now send batches of 32 images to each of our GPUs. So while previously the model only saw 32 examples in a single step, it's now seeing 64 examples on each step and thus each epoch is taking less time to complete. Before we finish off today, I want to show you an additional way you can run distributed training from this managed Jupyter lab environment that's particularly useful if you have a long running job. We'll use this execute feature at the top of the notebook over here. This feature allows you to run notebooks ad hoc or on a recurring basis with the hardware of your choosing. The notebook will be run cell by cell on Vertex AI training, which is the managed training service in Vertex AI. Now, before we do this, we'll want to make sure that our model is saved somewhere that we can access it later. So instead of saving it locally like the code does here, we're going to want to save it to a cloud storage bucket. Cloud storage is Google Cloud's object storage, and if you don't know how to create or access buckets, you can check out the resources in the box below. So I'm just going to paste in the path to a cloud storage bucket that I've already created in my project. And one thing we can do just before we run this execution is just to go ahead and set the number of epochs a little higher and train this model for a little longer just to make this a bit more realistic. So we'll click on the execute button right here. 
And we'll want to give our execution a name. I'm just going to keep the default that is given to me. We'll need to provide a cloud storage bucket and I've just selected a bucket in my project. And then for machine type, I'll select eight CPUs and 30 gigs of RAM. And I'll go ahead and pick the same configuration of GPUs that we tried earlier, but feel free to experiment with other GPU types if you'd like. Under environment, I'll go ahead and select the TensorFlow 2.6 option and note that 2.6 is the latest release as of the recording of this video. However, if you're watching at a future date, you might see 2.7 here, etc., and that's totally fine. Just make sure that you select the GPU option so that you can make use of the GPUs. And then we can go ahead and click Submit. This will submit our execution to Vertex AI Training, and we can click Done right here, and then pop over back into the Cloud Console to the Workbench section, where we can click on Executions right up here at the top. And you'll see that our execution is now running, and once it's completed, we'll see the View Result button turn blue, and we'll be able to see the output of our notebook. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward so that we can check out the outputted results. Our execution has completed, so we can click on View Result to see the output of our notebook. And again, this is just running the notebook that we had in our instance cell by cell on the managed training service so that we could run a long running job. And we can see at the end here, after training for 10 epochs, our model finished with an accuracy of 0.98. And because we saved the model to cloud storage, we can jump over to the cloud storage bucket. And you can see here in my demo bucket that all of the saved model artifacts have been stored here so that I can access them later for further experimentation. To summarize, we took some code in a Colab notebook and ran it on Google Cloud with multiple GPUs. First, we ran the code directly in a managed notebook instance. And then we use the notebook execution feature for a longer running job. If there's a distributed training on GCP use case you'd like to see or learn more about, definitely let me know in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. 